Welcome to XConnect TV. My name is Kareem Kanji. Thank you so much for joining us. I invite all of you uh, to our various social spaces online. We are at xconnecto.com. On YouTube, our YouTube channel is XConnect TV. You can find us also on twitter.com slash xconnecto and as well on Twitter. Did I say Twitter already? Facebook and Twitter, both XConnect TO. So many places that one can be. Very excited to bring to you uh, this conversation. Uh, today we have as a guest Adam Epstein. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. I got the last name correct. Yeah, we're good. Awesome. I'm doing very well. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Really appreciate that. Uh, for those that don't know, um, you recently left the life of being a lawyer. Yeah. Um, so what's the and, and huddles.com? Um, I want you to describe what huddles.com is, but also explain your thought process from moving to being a lawyer, mm -hmm. to being an entrepreneur in the tech sector. For sure. Um, so Hubbers is a social network for the everyday athlete to discover where to play sports, manage who you play with, and find out what products and equipment are right for you. Okay. Um, I've always been very passionate about this space because I view myself as the target customer times a thousand. I'm always interested in finding out uh, new games, new runs, participating in games, organizing games, mm -hmm. uh, and I bought, spent too much wasted dollars on products and equipment. Okay. Um, so I'm building, I'm solving a problem for myself, and there just happens to be many million other people out there like me. Um, and with respect to my foray into tech entrepreneurship from law, um, I had always known that I wanted to use my legal background to parlay myself into sports. Okay. Um, I'm very passionate about sports, have been my whole life. Um, I didn't know it would be in this context, but around this time last year, I got called to the bar mm -hmm. uh, and sort of started seeing this idea through. Um, and now I'm deep into tech, and, and this is where I am, and I'm loving every minute of it. Nice. So you're, you didn't envision actually working at a law firm and articling and going through that whole process? No, I, I articled. You actually had to I do articled, okay. got called to the bar, okay. went through the whole process, did okay. not continue to practice law, Okay. Um, and instead began working. And you, you knew that before? Uh, I knew that that would be the case. To be honest, okay. my goal had always been to get a job with an NBA team at basketball operations. Okay. My lifelong dream had been to be a GM of an NBA team. All right. Um, so the NBA draft and free agency right now is really interesting to me. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, recreational athletics has always been something that I'm very passionate about. And I'm, I always love to play. I played basketball in 15 different countries. I pick up basketball in 15 different okay. countries. Okay. <laughs> uh, I played in men's leagues all throughout uh, Canada and the US. Um, so I know these pain points that are suffered from the everyday athlete, and I know it's just not a phenomenon amongst my friends, but it's an international phenomenon because sport is an international phenomenon. Absolutely. And I'm excited to, to continue speaking with you. Um, so let's, let's talk specifically about huddlers.com. What sort of, um, you know, you, you said that you, you got into law, you knew you wouldn't necessarily practice law, but you would want to parlay it into something in sports. What has your background in law, mm -hmm. uh, how has that helped you mm -hmm. start your own business? Um, well, for one, incorporation was really easy. Okay. Uh, you knew what papers to get. Yeah, I, knew, I knew how to incorporate the company, so that saved me a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, I don't, not necessarily law, the legal background per se, but um, I think my legal background will benefit me as founder of this company as it really moves forward um, and becomes more of a business from startup to what I hope will be small, medium stage business in which I'll then have to start working on deal flow, on, on financing arrangements, on corporate governance. So use that corporate law background that I have at a later date. but. Um, right now, I think the more that where I what my law degree really states sort of is mm -hmm. um, it, when I when I enter a conversation, be it with a, a strategic partner, a brand, a potential team member, an investor, um, or a potential user, it, it really just states that uh, I'm, I, I hope I'm somewhat of a smart guy. Yeah, uh, I'm not messing around, but more importantly, people see the opportunity that I'm giving up of being a lawyer. And Interesting. That, um, people know, listen, lawyers get paid a high amount. So if a software engineer says to me, like, hey, like, I can't take this risk, like, 
I don't, I don't think I can forego making a hundred grand um, at a large software company um, to pursue this startup opportunity. They can, they know that I'm on somewhat of the same level with them, mm -hmm. which I'm taking that same risk. Yeah. So it's not as though I'm someone that is just doing this because it's the last thing that I can do, but sure. rather um, it's it's something that I'm very passionate about and taking that risk and foregoing other opportunities that I may have at my disposal. That's where I think it's really important. Hmm. Um, and then also drafting a lot of early stage corporate documents. Uh, you, I'm able to have some interesting uh, financing arrangements with people that are interested in not necessarily joining the team, but providing some work for the company okay. uh, and reimbursing them for that work. Sure. Um, so that's sort of where my legal background has helped more um, at the early stage. But my background and passion for being the professional recreational athlete, as yeah. I alluded to, is really what's what's fueled the product that you see today um, and the company that you see today. And uh, and I hope as the company grows, I can move more so into that corporate role. Interesting. Now, how you know how was you don't come from a technical background in terms mm -hmm. of programming and coding. How has it been finding the right talent? Mm -hmm. um, you know, here in Toronto, it's very competitive. Mm -hmm. A lot of large corporations. There was a lot of startups. Right. How have you found that process? Um, it's phenomenally challenging. Okay. Um, I am the sole founder of Hubblers. I would really like that to not be the case. I am mm. actively looking and have actively been looking for uh, technical co-founders and software engineers to jump on board the team uh, and be a part of the Hubblers team. But um, that's as you mentioned, it's, it's phenomenally competitive and it's incredibly challenging um, for someone like myself to build that team. And, and to be honest, the equity discussion has never really been an issue. It's okay. never been a, hey, this isn't enough, this is too much. Uh, my view is I'm not concerned about being diluted, I'm concerned about not making the best product um, and not seeing the vision through. So if someone is a fit for the company, um, a percentage point discussion in my view will, will, not, will, not, will not be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to that end, um, I've sort of had a three-headed monster at my disposal as a uh, as sole founder, which has been product development, team building, and fundraising. Yeah. And I've sort of put the team building and fundraising aspect to the side for the past many months in which I had to execute on this concept. I'm a guy running around with a big ambitious idea with no tech background, before, tech background beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, I needed to prove to people within the industry, prove to myself and, and to anyone that I'm interested in working with um, that I can A, execute on this concept in a, in a great way. I think that the web application you see today uh, demonstrates my ability to execute the concept and see the vision through. Um, and now the conversations that I've had from a team building perspective are a lot better conversations that I had, let's say, in January or February when a software engineer would look at me and be like, who are you, who are you trying to do this, you know? Um, when, when my view is, listen, I'm, I'm not, it's, it's not who are me to, to try and do this, but I am the guy trying to do this. Yeah. Um, and I'm the guy executing on this concept uh, and moving forward the business as much as possible. Interesting. Um, what sort of research, you know, I, I know that you, you've got a passion for it and you said that, you know, I, I would have used something like this. If still, it was I still, you, I use, you would, use have, yourself, would right? have, and, and you continue use, to use yeah. it. Outside of yourself, mm -hmm. how did you go about not necessarily proving the concept, but mm -hmm. but doing the research to figure out whether or not something like this would work. Is there are there, are there other similar type of models out there that you took a look at? Yeah, we have a lot of indirect competitors, but few direct competitors. Okay. And it's it's good that we have indirect competitors because it's good to see that people are trying to do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, also, a proof of concept would be that people are using other platforms for what we're trying to do, discovery of game, management of games, um, scheduling of games. People are using a meetup or a Facebook to okay. or, or group email change to manage that. But the feedback that we get from any athlete, whether that be someone I'm close with or an athlete on the street or, or just from doing early user testing is that these platforms really aren't appropriate for what we're, they're trying to achieve. And that is 
quickly, efficiently, easily schedule sports in, a, in an interactive sports specific way mm -hmm. in which the, your profile is not tied to the music you're listening to or what your girlfriend has to say on Facebook, sure. but rather your profile is, is tied to your skills as we have on others in which you can see your competitiveness level in certain aspects of each sport or the venue, uh, the event that you're playing in, you can tag the venue so you can see how people are interacting in specific venues in unique ways as well. Okay, so you know there are sites, uh, and you mentioned like whether someone creates a Facebook event or a group um, or meet up, and there's also sites and organizations such as the Toronto Sports mm -hmm. and Social Club, you know, which kind of takes sort of that organizational thing, whether it's here's your schedule, here's where you're playing, here's your team, here's potential conversations. Where do you see huddlers kind of fitting in? Um, right, so all our, our vision is to create an athletic ecosystem between user, team, and group, and organization. Mm -hmm. um, so you alluded to the Toronto Sports and Social Club. That's one of many athletic organizations that we would hope to encompass. Okay. Um, if you look at their website, um, their offering is substantially better than most, if not all, athletic organizations out there. Okay. It's an industry that's dictated upon uh, cash and check transactions and handwritten registrations, yeah. uh, which is crazy in this day and age. Sure. Like, you're not you're able to pay by a credit <laughs> card or, or register online. Like, it, it's wild, and, and, and invariably it's because a lot of these organizations are so limited to the resources that they have. They have such a poor online presence. Um, so we hope to really solve that problem by not providing them exclusively uh, organization and lead management software, as some of our sort of indirect competitors okay. might, but rather we're providing them with the whole ecosystem as a whole. And on account of that, in our view, we can create a more interactive and better product at a cheaper price for these athletic organizations. Interesting. Okay. Let's let's take a look at you know what you've been or discuss um, the platform itself, huddlers.com. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening, watching, you know, uh, go into huddlers.com. Um, people are able to create a profile. Do they we, call, we call it a card. A create almost like a sports card. Exactly, it's modeled after a retro trading card. And are you going to offer this as a as a product to potentially sell? Well, uh, <laughs> I had I had actually some initial talks with top sport it was top like cards in which uh, you'd be able to actually print a Huddler's card, but uh, they need to see a couple more users before sure. they jump on board. A Absolutely. Like Absolutely. So you know, when I when I went on it earlier, it asked me you know what sports I'm interested, mm -hmm. what my what my skill level was. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily not skill level, but sure. what skills. So what skills? Which each sport you have, That's right. you uh, you select the skills that you have, and the skills are allow for you to create a ready-made athletic resume in which people can engage with. So for example, I am a basketball player. Mm -hmm. I describe my skills as marksman, distributor, and janitor. So okay. marksman for shooting, distributor for being a point guard, and janitor for doing the dirty work to help your team win. Yeah. And um, with each one of those skills, uh, people can then fan those skills, thereby endorsing me in that skill set. Okay. And based upon the certain levels of fans that you have, uh, you achieve thresholds of those skills. So five is active, 20 bronze, 50 silver, 100 gold. So now you're able to, through that, um, be able to see the competitiveness level of certain players. So if there's a gold level marksman, you know they're a pretty good three-point shooter. And, yeah. and they can take that 100 fans that they have in that award, and gold level in that award, and try and get on any team, league, event, um, which you say, hey, like 100 people have said I'm a good three-point shooter. Like, yeah. If you need a three point shooter on the team, I got it. Or like I'm the janitor, like I'll be I'll be doing the dirty work. You don't expect much from me, or king of the glass or rejector. And I apologize to use basketball as an analogy. No worries, no worries. It's my it's my sport. Sure. Um, so so that's how we create the ready made athletic resume in mm -hmm. an engaging way that is dictated by the social proof of others in your athletic network. I'm I'm very curious, you know, outside of people. Um, being able to connect with other people to, to potentially put together a team and then from there put together a league on their own and, and then the scheduling aspect and stuff like that. Um, I'm curious if there'll be other user generated content, so whether it's photos of, of the games or videos of the games yeah. or you know outside of the points maybe someone uploads a video resume. Yeah. Sort of thing. So when you talk about basketball, here my top three dunks. Right. You know, media sharing has been something that we've been hesitant to get into, okay. only because 
you know, there's a couple photo and video sharing companies out there today. Sure. And they do a pretty darn good job at it, in which any software that we have for photo and video sharing mm -hmm. um, would ultimately be uh, a much worse offering than these other companies. So we've been getting into that way, into that strategy a, uh, a little slowly in that okay. um, we're waiting on to see how we can improve that offering for the user and whether that be adding photos to an event or maybe just syncing your Instagram account and having a hashtag Hudlers and then uploading automatically any of those pictures onto your Hudlers card. Mm -hmm. That way, hey, uh, Instagram does a pretty good do job of mobile photo sharing. Um, why not just piggyback onto their system? Off of theirs. Yeah. Um, that might be something we get into, but media sharing is absolutely something that we'd love to get into. And not a way of like top three dunks, like creating a highlight sure. reel, just being able to show your friends like, hey, like I just hit this home run, or I had that game winning buzzer beater. Like Those aren't moments that should be forgotten. Those are moments that be, should be showcased, and they're proud moments that you'd like to showcase on your card. Mm -hmm. um, because that's what we're all about, is creating those Hudler's moments, as we like to say. How, how did the name come about, by the way? Well, what do you, what do you think it's about? Well, you're a basketball fan, right. so, you know, I related to a huddle, you know, whether it's so, in a locker so room. So, what, what is a huddle? That's what, what, is, you, what is the concept? Coming of together, when the team comes together. Right, so it's it's a group of individuals right. getting, to get, getting together to achieve a collective goal, right. which is exactly what goes on on our platform. Your individuals coming together on the Huddler's platform to find a game, review a product, communicate as a team. Um, that the, the name is is sort of the vision of what we're trying to achieve. Was it easy to get that domain name? Uh, wasn't, well, paying for it was easy. Paying for it. But, <laughs> but figured out how much price, to pay. <laughs> uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't extravagant, but it was more than $10. There you go. Okay, fair enough. Um, you know, you recently, came from back from a competition, I believe. Yeah. From New York City. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Talk about what, what was the competition? What was it? Sure. What, was it about? Um, what did you guys achieve from there? Um, we met a company, or I met a company uh, a, couple, a couple weeks ago called Evolution. And they're a really interesting company out of New York in which they try and uh, partner blue chip brands with startups. Okay. And their first blue chip brand is Kraft Foods. And okay. so, um, I went to New York to pitch for Kraft Foods. Uh, first, I had to apply to be in the competition, uh, was accepted in the competition, and then uh, pitched Kraft Food brand managers as well as the people running the event um, to run an integrated marketing campaign between Huddlers and Kraft Foods. Mm -hmm. um, and, and thankfully, we were the runner up. So uh, later on this month, I'll be going back to the actual Kraft headquarters this time to pitching mm -hmm. um, all the brand managers to see. Um, how Huddlers and Kraft Foods can integrate. Um, hopefully it's getting more snacks for our users. And, that, and you know what, that's a big thing about what we're trying to achieve on Huddlers is, okay. is, is that community building. Um, is if you're a member of the Huddlers community, you find out about the best games, participate with athletes like yourself, get rewarded with snacks, get deals on products and equipment. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're trying to achieve is being part of the Huddlers community, you get rewarded for sharing your sports on Huddlers. So um, we all we just ask for you to share your sports, and from a corporate perspective, what we'll do is try and reward you for doing just that. So on account of that, um, one early thing that we're doing is we don't necessarily have the data right now um, to be able to for a user to discover just an impromptu basketball, soccer, or volleyball game. But sure. we're starting to actually curate and promote runs for our users, in which okay. hey, if you're a part of Huddlers, you know that. Um, every when, uh, Sunday at noon at the Esplanade basketball courts, which are by far the nicest basketball courts in Toronto, there'll be a great game. Or Wednesday at Asbridge's Bay for volleyball, you can go play at volleyball and we'll promote those events on our Hubless platform. Um, so these are sort of the things that we're trying to do right now to reward our users to know, to let them know these are the best venues in your city. Um, get together on the Hubbers platform and, and participate in this event. So there's not that many events going on on Hubbers right now, but sure. the ones that are are these promoted runs that we're trying to engage our user base with. I was going to ask you, what's the, for, what, what, what is it that you're going after 
first? Are you going after people to input their data? Are you going after events and trying to bring it's, them it, on to our, our, our real big focus is social athletic event scheduling. So anytime that you are planning on playing a sport with or against someone, mm -hmm. uh, or whether that be a team, you would schedule that on Huddlers and uh, interact with a venue on Huddlers. And okay. our big thing, um, our big aspect of the fe of a feature on our platform is our integration with the Foursquare Venue Platform API, in which any time sure. you schedule an athletic event, you tag a venue, in which you're then able to actually interact with that venue, see a common uh, event flow and message board for any events that have been scheduled there um, and begin interacting with that venue. But the cool thing with that is that these venues aren't people behind a computer in which you're contacting, but rather these venues are fields of grass, slabs of concrete, or hard court in which you're now able to actually communicate with these uh, like public venues and, and public inanimate objects um, that you would never otherwise be able to do so. Um, so that's pretty cool. And, and one thing that we're deploying soon is um, is Hubler's notifications, in which you now are able to fan venues. So you can fan the six or seven venues that you're most familiar with and love playing sports at. Okay. Um, and then you'd be notified anytime someone schedules an event or writes on the board of those venues. So conceptually, you could pop onto our platform on Saturday at 10 a.m., know that you want to play sports, and then receive several notifications of the activity going on at your favorite venues, and then participate in it. One of the, the most powerful things that we're trying to achieve is people to use our technology to enable offline experiences that create lasting athletic relationships. If someone is able to um, use our platform um, and discover an event and participate in that event and, and have a, an athletic relationship with someone that they would not have otherwise ever met, that's a really, really powerful interaction in which, in which people will then ideally evangelize the product to everyone that they know to showcase that these awesome things are happening as being part of the Hubbard's community. That's amazing. You mentioned the use of the Foursquare API. Yeah. And, and I wanted to, to, um, to ask about your use of mobile and, and mm -hmm. where, where, where the whole idea of mobile fits into this. You know, everyone's carrying a smart mobile. Most people are carrying a smartphone. Mm -hmm. Uh, with them and how you are planning to, if not if you haven't already, planning to utilize um, people's tendencies to always have a smartphone. Like right. We are we are right now a web application. Okay. Um, we have designed a prototype click through mobile application that has yet to be developed that we hope to uh, release in uh, the fall of this year. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot, if not all, of our efforts moving forward will be towards having a mobile-first philosophy. Mm -hmm. This is a mobile-first. This is a mobile experience that it we're is. trying to create. Yeah. Discovery of an impromptu event. Hey, we just played. Like, let's interact and, and add ourselves as teammates. Let me fan your award. That's the moment of most engagement for their user. It's not Absolutely. four hours later when they're at a computer. You know, you might say, I regret going web first, um, but the great thing with going web first is that um, mobile, mobile is a much more refined experience than the web experience. You're able to offer a lot more on web than you are on mobile, and by going web first, we are able to learn exactly what our users need and then focus on that through our mobile offering, mm -hmm. um, which is what we're doing. We're eliminating a lot of sort of the functionality and features from the web experience onto mobile so that they're, they're two complementary experiences. But a lot of what we'll be doing moving forward is, is going to be with a mobile-first philosophy awesome. um, and a mobile center of focus because the, the main thing is that is the moment of most engagement for our users. Sure. How have you been using um, you know, tools like Facebook and Twitter and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and these other social platforms to bring awareness to others. Yeah, we, we're active on Facebook, we're active on Twitter, we're active on Instagram, we're active on Pinterest, we're active on LinkedIn. All over the place. And we're active on Foursquare. Yeah. Um, so, we're, I mean, we're a social media company, so why sure. not use these other companies to our mm -hmm. benefit, right? Um, these are where our users are going to be coming from. And, and the amazing thing with that is it's phenomenally difficult to take an offline interaction with someone into an online conversion. Like I might meet someone on the street and they might say, 
I might talk to them for a half hour and they say, oh, wow, there's this awesome, like I need this. Um, like I'm for sure gonna sign up, I'll tell all my friends. And you know what happens? They, 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 didn't, they didn't sign up, like, yeah. they didn't sign up. But if you see something, someone retweets one of our Huddlers promoted runs or someone gets the City Rider Award on Huddlers and someone sees that and they immediately click that link and sign up through Huddlers, that's where we've seen a lot of our conversions onto signups for our site. So. Um, the, through the other platforms, there the, there's very quick links, and that, those are also moments of engagement. And when you say, "Oh, Huddlers is doing this cool thing," like let me check out the actual Huddlers platform, and it's really also an expansion of the brand. Sure. Um, in which in which you know that we're somewhat ubiquitous on all platforms, mm -hmm. um, and and that and that just allows our users and our and, and that's part of the community management. Is, is engaging our community versus all, all sorts of platforms. But yeah. but one thing that I, I also want to touch upon is is uh, we're leaving tips up right now at athletic venues on Foursquare everywhere. Like right. We're we're a big proponent of Foursquare because Foursquare has helped us so much okay. um, in in our platform API um, and, and and allowing for users to interact with venues that. Um, Hubbers is now trying to leave tips so that users who follow us on Foursquare um, are able to really know what's going on around them. And, and, and we really try and make insightful tips, not just, hey, this is a great place to play soccer, but you know, grass is a little long in the summertime, runs are semi-competitive, like really get to know the, the nitty gritty about those venues. because. You know, the National Post or Toronto Life might leave tips on Foursquare about right. restaurants, but this is a really underserved uh, insight that's being provided in which we, you want to know specifically um, the type of insight we have with respect to athletic venues. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you've engaged with um, people like the City of Toronto mm -hmm. and uh, you know Parks and Recreation de uh, mm -hmm. Department there and, and, and helping them to potentially promote the the use, the recreational use of a variety of facilities, whether it's the swimming pools mm -hmm. or the parks or whatever the case may be. I'm curious about that. Um, city of Toronto, not so much. Okay. I'd, I'd love to talk to the City of Toronto, and if anyone in the City of Toronto is sure. listening, I'd, I'd love to chat. Um, we have spoken with the uh, MLSE Team Up Foundation, if you're not familiar okay. with it. It's a uh, non-for-profit arm of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment that runs uh, community initiatives for underprivileged use and refurbishments of courts. So, for example, our uh, Sunday noon run in the Esplanade basketball courts is a refurbished court by Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, mm -hmm. um, in which we can allow for both our visions are directly in line, in which uh, we can allow for uh, the promotion of events and activity and, 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 and sport for youths in an mm -hmm. engaging, fun way, in which you know, um, ultimately, if you're going to play a sport as a high school youth or a, or a junior high youth, um, you're taking the opportunity cost of not hanging out with your friends and doing that cool thing that you would otherwise have done. So if you can find a cool way to promote your athletics, which is really what we're trying to sure. do, um, that's something that we'd really like to have. And, and that's and that's sort of the conversations that we're having with uh Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, and I was also speaking most recently with the uh, City of New York, in which they're really interested in knowing, um, sure, they, they invest a lot of money into their parks and the recreation at the parks. They want to know how users are actually interacting with those parks, like, oh, like we have this basketball court at this park, or this, or this, these tennis courts, like, should we refurbish them? Are people actually using them? So our platform will show not only that should you, but um, these are the type of events that are going on in yeah. these parks, um, and uh, and this is how you should dedicate those resources toward those parks accordingly. So, um, one thing that we'd like to get into is sort of a, a, a data exchange between the cities, in which we can provide data as to how our user base is interacting with these public venues, mm -hmm. and at the same time, they can interact, they can provide their open data to us. Um, I know that the city of New York does an incredible job with that. Um, I hope the city of Toronto does. They, I, they have an open data right, policy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's right. Yeah. So um, I'm definitely going to start to seek out the city of Toronto Excellent. and try and improve on that. So I know you're looking for a technical co-founder. 
co-founders. Co-found, take out the co-founders. Big team. We're trying to build a, a, a rock you want star. You a huddle. A rock star team of A players. Um, you also looking for investors as well? For sure. Um, right now it's uh, financed through family and friends. Okay. Um, but we are actively looking for investment and, and investment really comes with the team. Um, sure. at, we're at such an early stage in which uh, you know people don't invest in ideas or early stage products. People invest in early stage teams. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of a, a catch twenty two in that m- talented software engineers need to see that they're going to get paid for their work, sure. but people that were going to be writing the checks need to see that talented software engineers there. are going to come on board. So sure. it's really tough, but it's one of the many challenges that I face as founder. Of a startup. Listen, all the best. Where, well, before I close off, where can people, whether they want to, you know, just follow you in your adventures, or whether people want or are interested in talking to you about potentially being part of your team, or if people there, you know, want to, you know, give you guys a chance and and, and invest with you guys, mm-hmm. how can people get in touch with you? Where can they find you? People can get in touch with me at Adam at Hudlers uh, people can tweet at us at We Are Hudlers. We're active on Facebook. My own personal Twitter account is at A Epstein32. I like to wear the number 32 okay. in sports. Uh, Basketball. And follow us on Foursquare. We're doing some really cool things on Foursquare that a lot of other brands aren't doing right now. I look forward to checking out the Foursquare. Sure. We're very, very curious about that. Adam, thank you so much. Thank you. For That's joining great. us. Really, really sure. appreciate it. All the best with your future, you know, the, the, the future growth. Uh, of Hardless, and I'm really excited about watching you know what it is uh, that you guys do. Thank you so much for joining. Again, my name is Kareem Kanji. You can follow me personally at Kareem Kanji on Twitter. And again, watch this video and all of our other interviews on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash xconnecttv. Subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.